Shalom. I want to start off this video by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashim Yahusha Bahashim Rakakodash. I want to give the honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well in grace and peace to you elect around the four winds, believing and pushing his truth in all sincerity. May the blessing of election be upon your houses. This is your fellow servant, Rokar, you're from the GMS Orlando camp. And I uh, just had a few things I was meditating on tonight as we're entering into this day of atonement that I wanted to put on wax. You know, Lord's willingness is exhorting and edifying unto you like Akim and Akwaf out there. All right, because this day of atonement is affording us the opportunity to reconcile and to draw closer to our power by purging out the spiritual and mental poisons that we may have accumulated and I walk up until this day, you know, so without further ado, uh, I want to start off here in Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 26. All right, it reads, and the Lord Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, also on the 10th day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you and you shall afflict your souls. And offer offering made by fire unto the Lord. And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord your power. For whatsoever soul it shall it soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from amongst his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in the same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It shall be unto you. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest and you shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even from even unto even shall you celebrate your Sabbath. All right. I want to read back up. All right. Here. In verse, excuse this car passing by. All right, I want to read right back here in verse 28. It says, And you shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your power. All right, and I want to get the definition for atonement. All right, here from the etymology online, it reads, Condition of being at one. It says, Reconciliation. All right. And this is a day of reconciliation. All right, this is a day that the Lord afforded our nation. All right, the nation of Israel, which today consists of you so-called Negroes, you so-called Latinos, and you so-called Native American Indians. All right, this is a day that the Lord has afforded our nation to reconcile with them. All right, when you, if you don't know what that word reconcile means, all right, let's get it here. From the etymology online. All right, bear with me. <clears throat> As I uh, wait for it to load up. All right, reconciliation or reconcile. Off the etymology online, it says renewal of friendship after disagreement or enmity. All right. And this is the Lord affording us the opportunity to renew our friendship, to renew the agreement that we made with him. All right. To renew the, that covenant that we made with him. All right. After after our disagreement, after our enmity, all right, after our disobedience. All right. Because as a nation, we've been disobedient. And as individuals, we've been disobedient to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right. We've broken that friendship. We've broken that 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 commitment, so to speak. And this is a day that the Lord is allowing us. All right, to reconcile, all right, to mend that relationship. All right, it says a reestablishing, a reconciling. It says an act of harmonizing or making consistent. Let's see, let's get some more definitions. It says to restore to union and friendship after estrangement or variance. All right, and this is the Lord affording us the opportunity once again to restore that union. All right, to restore that union that we once had as a nation with our power, with our power, 
that was broken, all right, that was that's, that was disannulled in a sense through our disobedience, all right. And this day of afflicting our souls, this day of atonement, as we afflict our souls, all right, allows us to reconcile with our power, which is a very important deal. This is very important for us because as a nation, all right, the more that we're connected with our power, the more uh, the, the the stronger our union with our power, all right. The more defense we have, the stronger we are against our enemies, the stronger we are against the flesh, the stronger we are against these demons, these principalities that we're fighting on a constant basis. The further away we are from our power, the, the, uh, the weaker that union, the weaker our hedge. And coming into the times that we're coming into, all right, the day of Jacob's trouble, the hour of temptation, all right, the trial of our faith, we're going to need a strong hedge. Which is Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And this is a day that, that the Lord has afforded us to draw closer and nigher unto him through the affliction of our soul. All right, because as, our, as we afflict the flesh, the closer in the spirit we become to the Lord. That's why the scriptures say when you're facing certain demons that, you, uh, that are too strong for you, the, uh, the best way to overcome them is through prayer and fasting, through afflicting your soul. Because through the afflicting of the soul, the spirit is strengthened. Yeah, that's what that's what's happening right now. All right. The Lord is strengthening our spirits through the affliction of our soul. The more you afflict your, 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 your flesh, all right, the more you put off the flesh, all right, the closer we draw, the closer you draw in the spirit, the stronger your spiritual man is built up. And this is how we purge out the poisons, the spiritual mental poisons, all right, that we may have accumulated in this walk of ours up until this day. And poison is anything that is, is, is excess, all right? Poison can be food, all right? Poison, poison can be anything that you, that you uh, use in excess that is hindering you from drawing closer to the Lord, all right? It can be your ego. It can be your ambition. It can be your laziness. It can be vanity. It can be fear. It can be anger. It can be whatever, all right, that is beyond what you need, is, is that, that is in excess, that is hindering you from finding that balance in the spirit. And through the affliction of our soul, all right, excuse this car. And through the affliction of our souls, all right, as we, as we afflict our flesh, all right, we're able to pinpoint our different weaknesses. We're able to pinpoint those, those areas in where we're accessing, those areas in where we're not exercising balance. You know, and speaking to myself first and foremost, of course. You know, we're able to pinpoint where we're going overboard, where we're where we're doing too much, or where we're not doing enough. But um, let's get this. Let's read this again, and then I'll grab a couple more precepts, and then we'll close it out. All right. This is uh, Leviticus 23 and verse 26. Once again, we're going to read it again. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of the seventh month, it shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. All right, and we don't, we don't have an altar anymore. You know, we don't have uh, a place of sacrifice, so to speak. The way that we sacrifice unto the Lord today, all right, in the modern day and age, all right, is by making our bodies a living sacrifice, like it says in Romans, the 12th chapter in the second verse. All right. This is our this is this is how we make sacrifices unto the Lord by fire. All right. The words of our mouth. All right. These words of truth are likened unto a fire. All right. Speaking these words of truth unto our people. That's that's a way of offering sacrifice unto the Lord by fire. All right. Practicing. And, and, and rehearsing this day of atonement. All right, that's a sacrifice unto the Lord. All right, our daily walk, all right, walking according to the standard that the Lord has uplifted in the earth. That's a sacrifice unto the Lord. All right, this is how we make a sacrifice. This is how we offer up sacrifices, all right, burnt offerings to the Lord in today's day and age is by offering up our body. All right, it says, and ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement. To make an atonement, to make an atonement for you before your, before the Lord, your power. 
all right? And we all, all right, have, have an atonement to make, all right? We all uh, uh, need to reconcile with our power. It's like it says in Micah, the uh, seventh chapter. Let's get it real quick. In the ninth verse. It says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause. Excuse these uh, this noise. I'll read it again. It says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. All right. So we have to we have to bear the indignation of the Lord because we've sinned against him. All right, we've all played a part in the condition that we find ourselves in today. Therefore, we all need to reconcile. We hear how about Shemi Yahweh because we all go off. We're in this flesh at the end of the day. We all go off. We all fall short. All right, but the Lord affords us certain opportunities, certain days, such as uh, this day of atonement. All right, to reconcile, to draw closer into him. All right, to offer up that propitiation. To, to, to restore that union all right with him but uh back in uh, Leviticus 23 and uh verse 29 for whatsoever so it it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day he shall be cut off from amongst his people all right and if you're not afflicting your soul all right in this in this in this in this holy convocation unto the Lord all right you are subject for your soul to be cut off the Lord is going to cut your soul off all right, from among the people. Because this is a requirement. This is a commandment from Yahweh Hashem Yahweh The Lord commands us to practice these holy days. This isn't an option. It's a commandment that we offer up this day of atonement to restore that union. And it's for, at the end of the day, it's for our greater good. It's for our greater good. The Lord allotted these days for us because he knew that we would need it. It says, verse 30, And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among, from among his people. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue for you forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. All right. And, you know, being here in Babylon, you know, in captivity, some brethren, you know, some sisters have to work, you know, and the Lord looks upon the Lord knows that and he's looking upon that, you know, with favor, you know, the Lord will uh, pardon for that because at the end of the day, we're in captivity. We're rehearsing the righteous acts to the best of our ability, you know, but afflicting our souls is something that we can do. All right. Some of us have to work. All right. On this day, you know, on, on this holy day. All right. But nevertheless, the affliction of the soul applies no matter what he says it shall be unto you a sabbath of rest and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even from even unto even shall ye celebrate your sabbath all right and this is from sunday eve all right to monday eve all right sunday the fourth this is the fourth all right and it's going to carry on until the fifth at even all right, September. But um, let me get these other precepts. All right. This is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. It says, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Yahweh Mashiach is in you, except ye be reprobate. All right, and this day allows us, affords us the opportunity to examine ourselves on a deeper basis, all right, on our day-to-day -day walk, we're constantly moving, you know, you're constantly moving, you, you, you're worried about different things, all right, but on this day of atonement, this day of rest, all right, where you're not allowed, where the Lord commands, you know, us to do no work, where the Lord commands us to afflict our soul, all right, it allows us a greater opportunity, it affords us a greater opportunity to examine ourselves, all right, on a deeper level, because as you afflict your soul, all right, as you put off the flesh, we draw closer to the spirit, we're able to look more closely. We're able to draw closer all right, to the Heavenly Father and pinpoint different weaknesses that we may not have been able to pinpoint 
if we weren't afflicting our soul. It says, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Yahweh shot my shack is in you, except ye be reprobates. All right, and this time allows us, all right, affords us the opportunity to purge the poisons. To purge the poisons that we may have accumulated in this walk of ours, man. All right, and that's a huge deal. All right. The Lord is uh, affording us the opportunity to prove our souls. And we'll just get this in our Surat. Or Ecclesiastes 37 and verse 27. It says, My son, prove thy soul in thy life and see what is evil for it and give not that unto it. All right. And in, the, in this walk of ours, we have to prove our own souls. All right. See what's good for us and see what's not good for us. All right. See what, see what we can do. Uh, some, some things. All right. Um, prove, uh, prove what we, uh, what is beneficial for us in the spirit. All right. And what's not beneficial for us in the spirit. Some things we may use in excess that we need to cut back on. All right. Some things that we may not be doing that we need to do. All right. It's a lot of things that we can constantly improve on. All right. And this day allows us. All right. To prove our soul. It says for all things are not profitable for all men. Neither have every soul pleasure in all things. Be not insatiable in any dainty thing, nor greedy upon meats. For excess of meats bringeth sickness, and surfeiting will turn into choiler. By surfeiting many have perished, but he that taketh heed prolongeth his life. Prolongeth his life. All right. And we're trying to prolong our life. All right. We're trying to prolong our life and endure to the end in this walk of ours, man. Like the righteous men before us, like Yahweh Shai, in order to receive that crown and that glory. Lord willing, we got that number. All right, but in order to do that, we got to prove our own souls. You know, we got to, we have to uh, see what's profitable for us. See what, uh, see what allows us to draw closer to the Spirit. See what draws us further from the Spirit. And give not our soul unto that. Hey, but with that being said, that's really all I had to say tonight. You know, our Lord's Witness is edifying. This is just meditating on that. You know, tonight, I seen a quote earlier today. Um, and it read, it was a question that was posed. You know, and the question was, what is poison? And it says, uh, the, the answer was, anything beyond what we need is poison. You know, it can be power, laziness, food, ego, ambition, vanity, fear, anger, whatever. You know, anything that is in excess is poison. All right. And the Lord is allowing us the opportunity all right, to cut off that excess. All right. That poison in the spirit. All right. And bring forth that balance, that balance that we need in order to please the Lord, that balance that we need in order to overcome and endure to the end. But with that being said, Shalom. All right. Stay up.